On December 28, 2022, Rom Will's Money Matters YouTube channel posted a video entitled, So Many American Men Not Working is a Major Issue. Now, for those of you who have been to other parts of the world, in particular, third world countries, getting a job is an issue because jobs are just not available. Which is why if you live in any part of sub-Saharan Africa, you will most likely need to start a business to create your own employment. But that doesn't seem to be the case in the United States. The United States has a supply shortage pretty much because of COVID. And what we're seeing now is that you have a lot of American men refusing to go to work. People have commented on this, such as Dave Ramsey, accusing men of being you know, very feminine and not wanting to get out and earn like they used to because the opportunities are still there. We have still some of the best institutions. We have a diverse economy and the opportunities are there if you want to get it. But the question is, why are American men not interested in working like they used to? In fact, we're working less and less than the each generations before us. But I kind of want to get back to Ron Wills and the effects of American men not working. I'd like to play a small snippet of his particular video and then I'll come back. So many American men not working is a major issue. And you know what, this ain't, you know, this halfway could have went on uh, my main channel and also my Deep Thought channel because this is more psychological. It's more what's happening what's with the mindset. Because we, on, but if I kind of limit it to just this Money Matters channel and what I talk about on here, you know, money, ma money management issues, stuff going on in the economy, that's ma a major difference. Because if the men aren't working, one way or the other, they're being a drain on the economy. Because, yeah, some will be getting uh, unemployment, but there's a whole lot. They are uh, they not getting anything. They're out of the system. In fact, I would say this. I always take the employment and unemployment numbers with a grain of salt. Like if they say it's 3.7, people say yeah, that's low. No, that's just low. Who's getting money? Who's getting money? There's a whole lot of men out there not getting it. And it's, it's a problem. Well, economically, if they're not making money, then they're not spending money. 30 million is a lot. Yeah, that's more. Well, well, that's one of the numbers I saw. I've seen everything from 7 million to 30 million. And, you know, I remember just the overall population that wasn't working at all was 100 million. I remember that time. And I don't know, because it depends on which group you look at and who's pulling out the numbers. And it's still probably higher because everybody's not answering the question. So, <laughs> you know, but it's a major issue on so Many love the economic thing, not putting money back into the system. Uh, relationships. Let's talk about that for a second. I don't usually talk about relationships on this channel, but if it's related to money. Now, I'm known for talking about, on my men's channel, I'm known for talking about men who get sex with a woman for free. They don't have to spend any money, anything like that. But if you're talking about a long-term relationship, you got to have money. And that, let's be clear, is not to spend it on the woman. In fact, in a marriage, the wife would probably be happy. You know, he'd get her some flowers like once a month. Seriously, <laughs> because once it's a relationship, once you're in a marriage or something of the, you know, profound relationship, living together, economics come in because you still have to pay the rent or mortgage. You still have to have a food budget. You got to pay the utilities. You is, in fact, I would say this, love isn't a good reason to marry. And indeed, in most of the world, uh, marriages are actually more business arrangements. Let me say that again, in most of the world. And they're lucky if they have like a lustful love for each other because you got to do all this other stuff. Here's the thing. If a man's not working, unless he's physically attractive enough to get a woman who will sponsor him, he'll be in trouble. But then that same man, if we talking, like I said, if we talking just sex with some women, he could probably find somebody if he ain't working. He probably have time to be at her beck and call, be a concubine anyway. But if we talking about a relationship, we talking about a marriage and we talking about a man should be a provider and a protector. Even if the woman's making money, a man should be in a position where he can provide if necessary. Well, if you have two, you know, the couple might have a child, the woman can't work as much, the man got to provide. And then 
She can't just jump up and go back to work. Shoot, some women don't want to. You still have to provide. But how can you do that if you don't have a job? Now, if you hear what Rom said, he points out, in my opinion, two significant things. Men not working are not pretty much reinvesting into the economy. They're not spending money. But then he goes on to relationship issues. And he talked about the fact that if you're hooking up with women for like one night stands or short term relationships, you know, you probably don't need money. But now once you want to get into long term relationships, now you need to be a provider or a protector when you want to have children. But that's the whole issue. See, Ron Wills comes from a, gen a different generation, the generation before me, where men prided themselves in being providers and protectors. But now issues have changed. Feminism has reared its head. Guys have been called toxic for their choice of masculinity. And I wanna talk about this particular YouTube channel uh, in which I saw something very, very interesting. The guys by the name of Tim Cast IRL, this video is called Men Are Refusing to Help Women and Children Stand By and Watch and Not Help As Society Collapses. I'd like to play a small clip of his video and then I'll come back. This is from the New York Times. This is from about a year and a half ago. Yeah. As a woman was raped, train riders mm. failed to intervene, police mm. say. And this was just the first story I was able to pull up. About f five years ago now, I think it was five years ago, I did a video on my main channel, men are refusing to help women and children. It got millions of views. And it was just like this 15 minute thing of me talking about it. There were a handful of stories. One, a woman was on a train and some guy started getting in her face, schmoozing on her and being really aggressive and no man would intervene. And hmm. then she was really angry and she was like, why wouldn't any man stand up for me? Well, there's a lot of reasons why they won't do it. Another story I read years ago, this may be like 10 years ago now at this point, a guy was in a store and he, th there, was a, there was a journalist who was in a store saw a child crying with no parent, seemingly lost. Yeah. And, they, and she said, I saw a man walk up, walk towards this kid, looking at the kid, concerned, then stopped, looked around, turned around and walked away. They ran up to the child, like this person, and got a security guard to help the person. And then the reporter said, she then ran to the man and asked him why he turned around and didn't help the kid. And the man said, because I would be accused of having kidnapped that kid and I don't wanna be involved. That is a crazy prospect that we have this story from Philadelphia where a woman was being raped on the train in front of people, and what did they do? Most of them just said, leave me alone. Some of them started filming, no one did anything. Mm. There's a lot of reasons why men are outright refusing to help women. One, I think some men have disdain for, for modernity, that we, we're in this era of toxic, ma masculinity is toxic, toxic, women can do whatever they want and you know without, without consequence, that's how they feel, I'm not saying it's true. And so you'll get a guy who's probably watching him and be like, screw him, I don't care, not my problem. So the attitude in general is for a lot of men, and I know this is to be true, men are not interested, period, in even helping women, even when women are being hurt or attacked because they fear something will happen to them. They fear that they can get hurt or somebody will blame them for the whole occurrence. Just like the man that was talking about the young kid that needed help, but he didn't want to go and help the kid because he didn't want to get accused of kidnapping. But let me talk about the people who actually suffer the most, and that is American women. When men are not working, when men give up on women, the generational poverty gap hurts women more, especially in the black community. NBC News posted this video two years ago on July 7th, 2020, the impact of a generational poverty on black Americans. Now, I want you to pay attention to what gender is being described here. Can you guess? For years, every day was a struggle for Carletta Johnson. Just being a single parent with no help, just, that was really, really hard. Even harder with no car, little family support, and only a part-time job, which also meant for her no health care. She was relying on government subsidized housing and food stamps to feed her three children. As for her paycheck? It was no more than six. Six hundred dollars. Every two weeks. That's every two weeks for you and your children. Right. And some days. I was sitting in the parking lot, I was just crying. And I'm like, okay, get yourself together. But it was all she knew, raised by a single mother herself, forced to grow up fast to help care for her five siblings. 
More than a thousand miles away in Phoenix, Arizona, Jonia Coleman has a similar story. I grew up in a single parent household with my mom and I had seven other siblings. My mom was on government assistance for a while um, to be able to help feed us. And things this like that. is generational you know, poverty. People are often born into poverty and it's been poverty that their mother, their grandmother, etc., has experienced. For a family of four, it's defined as making less than $26,000 a year. More than 38 million Americans live in poverty. For black Americans, it's one in every five, higher than Latinos, Asian Americans, and more than double the rate of white Americans. Now, while we're talking about female empowerment, we're talking about black girls rocks. And of course, you have American women who are definitely talented, who are definitely go-getters. And they're in every sector of the private economy or in the private sector of the economy. They're in every industry. The reality is no matter how much technology has changed, certain things stay the same. And the people that benefit the least off of American men working are women. And the reason why is because women are already the most single that they've ever been with a lot of those women growing up in generational impoverished environments where they don't see a man at all. And now couple that with the fact that many American men, in particular black men, do not want to waste their time getting married because they don't feel any value for being married. That's one thing that we're not talking about here. American men are not motivated to get married because they feel like they're not going to get anything. And whenever a group of men feel like it's not worth taking care of their women, especially the women in their community, it's bad news. I don't know who wanted to plan it this way. I don't know what American feminists thought that would happen, but this is where we're at. American men don't even want to go and ex excel anymore. No longer do they want to have kids like they used to. They don't want to go out and strive to do something bigger and better, build families, build homes, build communities. Because if that motivation was there, you would see a lot more American men working. But American men are just okay with moving back in the house. They already don't believe they're gonna have a sexual relationships anyway with some women, that women don't take them serious. Because again, like Rom said, if you're the top percentage of good looking men, maybe women will sponsor you. But for the rest of us as men, you gotta get out there and do something. And when you feel like, well, if I go out there and get a wife, it's an expense and I'm not gonna get anything because I'm dealing with women who may already have kids or who don't know how to respect men, I'm not gonna gonna waste my time. I'll just mosey on in life. I'll live on a minimum budget and I can be poor. I don't need to go out there and be successful. Whereas in the 50s and 60s, you had a lot of men that wanted to take advantage of the opportunities, albeit we have more opportunities now. We have the internet business, for example. That's how I'm talking to you today. And in the 50s and 60s, America was booming. The economy was still booming. There were opportunities. You saw many black men moving from the South to Chicago, to Detroit, to St. Louis, because the opportunities were there and they could take care of their families. But in today's world, American men are not interested in having families because they feel like there is no value there. So you're not even gonna get into long-term relationships if men feel like there is no value. And if we don't talk about value for investment, it's gonna only get worse. We see the outcomes of what's happening, but if we don't dissect why it's happening, you're gonna have more poor women out there. You're gonna have more poor kids coming out there, and you're gonna have more married couples of any race still being successful in comparison to what's happening right now. But guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode here. I already thank you for all that you do. We're out.